welcome back to Rating the List, where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we are going to be exploring number 87 from AFI's 100 Years, 100 Passions, the top 100 love stories of all time. All right. So tonight, we're doing number 87. Number 87 is The Unbearable Lightness of Being, directed by... Philip Kaufman, starring Juliette Binoche and Daniel Day-Lewis, and was released in the year 1988. So, the synopsis for this war drama is as follows. Tomas, a womanizing brain surgeon in Czechoslovakia, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, meets dissatisfied waitress Teresa, played by Juliette Binoche, while in her small town performing a specialized brain surgery. She is drawn to him intellectually and later tracks him down in Prague. She moves in shortly thereafter, complicating his affairs with other women. He asks one of his lovers, Sabrina, played by Lena Olin, to help Teresa find work as a photographer. Teresa soon grasps Sabrina is his lover and is both jealous and fascinated. She and Sabrina develop a close friendship. Tomas and Teresa marry. She continues to be distressed by his promiscuity and considers leaving him. They instead grow closer as the Soviet forces squash the Prague Spring with communist oppression. Soon they flee to Switzerland to join Sabrina. Neither adapts well and Teresa, upset by his continued infidelity, returns to Prague. He follows her and has his passport confiscated, making him unable to leave Czechoslovakia again. Teresa is elated and takes him back. He attempts to return to practicing medicine, but his past criticism of communism and refusal to retract his words blacklists him. Mm -hmm. Teresa works as a waitress and is propositioned by an engineer. She engages in a passionless liaison with him. Her guilt leads her to consider suicide, but Tomas stops her. Stressed by city life, they move to the country with an old friend, where they live idyllically. Sabrina, now in the U.S., receives word. Tom, Tomas and Teresa died in a car wreck. The, the last moments before they crash are shown, with the two of them happily driving home. Yeah. So this movie is like two different movies kind in of. a way. It kind like of is. it really starts off like a Woody Allen sex comedy. Like, it's very, very, like, people, everybody's having sex, having a good time. You know, he meets... Well, except for Teresa. She's not except having, Teresa. She's not having a real she's good time. She's not having a great time. But then she meets uh, Tomas, and then they they kind of fall in love. I'm still kind of uncertain about their relationship. But anyway... She's she's definitely in love with him. He's she in love is with her. very in love with him. Like, very in love with him. Yeah. And... He loves her, too. He does, but his love is different than hers. Maybe. I feel. I feel like he's never really going to be one of those guys who's going to be, you know, a one-woman man. Well, and, well, I, I don't think that means that he doesn't love her. What I think it means is that these are two people that were incompatible for each other. Mm-hmm. So he's the kind of person that should be in an open relationship. Oh, for sure. He, you know, he... he other women and that's fine if you're with a partner who agrees to that which she didn't which she didn't so I mean you you don't have you know um, you know ethical non-monogamy here he is cheating on her and she doesn't really but she kind of accepts it in a way so it's like it's just very very strange I, yeah. she loves him so much that she's willing to look the other way I guess but still it's like it, it still eats at her it eats at her and it's disrespectful yeah. You know, like, he would he would have been better off, like, if he and Sabrina were, like, a primary relationship, because she's the same way. Yeah. You know, they, you know, they had their fun together, and they were pretty compatible, you know, both, you know, in terms of their, you know, ethical, non, you know. Being open. Being open, and intellectually, they're both, you know, close in that way, too, and it's just... It was just weird, and it, it so, wasn't weird. It was just you know this this is this happens with a lot of people. It's like they just they try to fit you know a square peg into a round hole, and it's just like it doesn't work. All you do is cause pain to the other person and complicate your own life. 
you know, just wait it out and find someone who is going to be the kind of person that you want to be with. Mm-hmm. It's it's truly that simple. So, again, it starts off very lighthearted and, you know, they, they get married and all this. And then, literally, a tank is at their doorstep. Right. So, this takes place during the Prague Spring, which is when um, the Soviet forces and... Um, really kind of put their iron fist down and really start forcing um, communism throughout the uh, the Eastern Bloc. And they're stuck in the middle of it. And previous to this, Tomas had written like an article mm. in a newspaper condemning communism, you know, because he's more, you know, he's he and his friends are all a little more intellectual and arty and they don't want to be stuck with this kind of very rigid methodology he wants to you know he he's loose and free will you know free yeah, we- yeah. wheeling in his life and this that kind of you know government doesn't really you know lend itself to be able to do that um, when he comes back you know the the you know one of the um, government officials kind of tries to just you know just renounce what you wrote and he's like I'm not gonna do it Mm-mm. so you know he he kind of gets blacklisted. He really gets blacklisted. Like he can't, he can't go back to work at the the neurological um, practice that he was working at. So then he's working in a clinic, and then that is gone. And he's just like, well, I guess I'm not a doctor anymore. And they go yeah. out to, they kind of just go out to the country, and you know, they actually seem pretty happy out there for the most part. They get away from the city, and you know, other women, temptations of other women for the most mm-hmm. part. And I think at that point, I honestly think at that point he's kind of come to a realization of how much he's hurt her and I think he's putting in the effort whether he would have been successful or not I don't know because you know it's just kind of who he is I think if you put them back in a city setting he would have been maybe but I mean you know they they still you know are gonna encounter other people I mean they're not like you know like living in a hole so Mm -hmm. um it would have been interesting to see, you know, if the temptation arose, how he would have reacted to it. But I think by then, he seemed different to me. Oh, see, he didn't seem different to me. He seemed like the same person through the whole movie. He seemed to me. he seemed changed to me when they when they when they finally moved away. I think part of that was that's why he decided to let's move away. Um, so I, I I think he was different towards the end and you know then they have the you know this tragic ending unfortunately and yeah so I really was conflicted about this movie because to be honest I really did not like any of the characters at all mm-hmm. I didn't understand Teresa I understood she loved him very deeply but I just she just wasn't you know she's very flighty and very like, I don't know. I just can't put my finger on it, but I didn't really care I think for her she, character. I think she made him into an ideal that he isn't. Mm-hmm. Like, he was this guy that, you know, he, you know, they had this really kind of fun, flirty exchange while he was in her town. And she knows he's from Prague. And so she goes, you know, and she just kind of shows up on his doorstep. Mm-hmm. And he's just like... Oh, okay. Kind of taken aback at first. He's like, well, I, you know can throw you into the you know into the mix with the other women you know and then but you know along the way he kind of falls for her as well so Mm -hmm. he really complicates like you know his his lifestyle which is you know I'm you know I'm a single dude and you know I've got lots of female friends and Mm -hmm. we have relations and that's how my life is going to be and then you know he's basically like okay I'm in love with her and I can see other parts of what I want in a relationship. I but you know he wanted his cake and eat it too. He wanted all of that with her, but he also wanted the freedom to, you know, be with Sabrina and other women and things like that. Which mm-hmm. you know, and then you know, then she like herself, she's almost like, well, if he's doing it, I'm gonna do it. And then it just totally isn't right for her <laughs> whatsoever. No. She and not a, only that, like, she, I think she grows an interest in Sabrina because she wants to know, like, what's so special about her 
to why Tomas is always going off with her. Yeah. And she kind of like does. There's this scene where she's like out of her apartment and they're, you know, well, taking pictures, pictures other, and yeah. stuff. And it it gets a little, you know, like, um, sexual between the two of them. And it's just I think she's trying to understand mm. why he is seeing her. Mm. And I think in a way she kind of gets it. Yeah. At a I think that's kind of why she's accepting of her and of their their friendship, her like, and her. Like, you think that if it was only Sabrina, she'd be okay with it? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe, because I think she really cared about Sabrina. Hmm. And, um, but with all the other women, she's like, why? Like, why am I not enough for you? Hmm. And, um... It really felt like, this is how I want to say it, is they felt like brother and sister, in a way. Their relationship was very, like, platonic in a way, even though they were together. It was very, I don't know, maybe their relationship seemed childlike to me. Yeah, I think that's... I maybe think, that's what I'm trying to say. I think that's a better um, thing than saying they're platonic, because, I mean, they... You know, they they have some uh, fairly, you know, steamy scenes. In yes, movie so together. I think it's more of a childlike relationship. Yeah, like they're like teenagers. Yeah, almost like yeah. like especially with her because she's super young when yeah, we start out, like right? Julia Binoche, like she's like twenty two years old. Or she's something so she young in this movie. <laughs> she's so young, and then like even Daniel Day Lewis is a really yeah. young man in this movie. Lena Olin's young. There's a you know there's that scene that the the guy that she has the affair with is played by Stellan Skarsgård. Um, for those of you who don't know, he is you know you probably know who his son is from True Blood because you know everyone Alex Alex everyone seems to know who he is. He yes. looks exactly like his freaking dad. It's eerie. Mm -hmm. His dad is a really truly excellent yeah. character actor. He's been working for you know over forty years. He's just really really excellent actor. Um, but I mean, this movie is really well made. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of like emotional ups and downs, and you know they they really don't pull any punches. With no, you. and then you've got this whole backdrop of a war mm -hmm. going on as well, so it gives it this really. It's not really a war; it's an occupation. An occu okay occupation, but yeah. it's got this you know background tense yeah. tenseness to it. And I think it also represents this movie kind of resembles the love of their country mm -hmm. and how it was a very hard decision for them to leave it. Yeah. Um, so it was, it. like I said, I'm still like not sure how I feel about this movie. Yeah, well, um, I scored it as a 73 and Jerry scored it as a 75, so clearly she must have liked it more than me. Yeah, I, I thought it was so. interesting. I did... I appreciated the love story of it, yeah. you know, like it was a little, it was different, um, but yeah. Yeah, so of. therefore the list score is 74. Um, so uh, if you are uh, you want to continue on this journey, we only have 87 more movies That's to it. go. That's it. That's it. Just 87. Wait, didn't we just do 87? Yeah, but you have to count number one. Oh, got it. Um, so, the uh, math. Yeah, so uh, like and subscribe <laughs> if you want to continue on the journey with us we're going to go through not only the rest of this list but we're also going to uh, evaluate some uh, more contemporary movies from the last 20 years and a few really glaring omissions that from afi's list that were available at the time that this list came out and they didn't put it on the list um and come up with a frankly a better list we're gonna yes a better for list. sure and honestly like if you're watching us and you're like you know i'm not really that into movies but you know somebody who is and would appreciate a nice chat about different types of movies and redoing a list, you know, forward our YouTube channel on. Yep. So uh, like, subscribe. You can comment. You can you know write something down in the comments or send us an email at ratingthelist at gmail dot com. Until next time, I'm Brad. I'm Jerry. And we're rating the list. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.